In this tutorial, I'm going to show you my process of how to make one of these beautiful hammered sterling silver gemstone necklaces. This is an awesome project um, that contains a lot of cool skills like soldering, texturing, uh, shaping, more soldering, <laughs> uh, and just generally a lot of satisfying moments like this. The tutorial will cover a lot of basic stuff as well as interesting techniques like stone setting and how to oxidize silver. Uh, so grab yourself a hot drink, enjoy the tutorial and hopefully I'll see you at the workbench. So let's take a look at the raw materials I used for this project. First up, the star of the show uh, is a beautiful blue lace agate cabochon and uh, my girlfriend got this from Bali she says it's some kind of Botswana agate um, and this is actually like my favorite shaped cabochon that sort of tooth shape I absolutely love it uh, for the back of the pendant I actually used sheet silver this was uh, 0.7 mil thick but you can use thicker if you like and then finally, uh, to make the bezel setting, I used uh, this thin uh, silver bezel wire, which is super flexible and easy to use. So the first step was to figure out how much bezel wire I needed to cut to um, wrap around the stone. And in order to do this, I basically cut a piece of thin piece of paper that was roughly about the same thickness as my bezel uh, wire uh, and then wrap that around the stone as tight as I could and secured it down with a bit of Pritt stick um, and then I was left with hopefully the perfect amount of um, perfect length of bezel wire that I would need to cut so basically after snipping the paper I laid the paper out on the bezel wire uh, made a little mark with a pencil and then used the snippers to snip myself a piece of bezel wire. Next I took a file and just filed down both of the edges that I just snipped of the bezel wire just to make sure they were nice and flat so when they were soldered together you know they'd have a nice pretty seam um, and then I just had a quick little test a little test wrap around the uh, stone cabochon and it turned out I'd got the correct amount of bezel wire first time which was awesome. So the next job was to solder the seam of that bezel wire um, and to do this I used hard silver solder um, because that has a slightly uh, higher melting point than easy silver solder um, and basically this was the first of two joints that I would be soldering on the piece um, so it made sense to use hard solder to solder the bezel. So let me show you my first and unsuccessful attempt <laughs> at uh, soldering this bezel wire as I feel like it's worthwhile knowing how not to do things um, rather than how to get them right first time. So basically the first time I tried to solder this I soldered it in the same way as I would uh, like a silver ring uh, but what I found was as I heated the bezel wire with the torch everything was going according to plan but then uh, the bezel wire would kind of uh, get misshapen and then the seam wouldn't line up so this is the second attempt of how I did it and this is the one that makes more sense uh, so I basically put a little bit of flux onto the seam you saw me there mixing that up earlier and then I put a piece of hard solder down onto uh, the soldering block and then basically placed the um, the bezel wire ring on top of the solder piece um, and kind of the theory behind this is that as you heat the piece um, the, the the flux will kind of liquidize and there's like kind of like a capillary action that kind of pulls that solder up into the joint uh, when it liquefies so let me see if that worked. <laughs> yeah, you'll start to see as it kind of heats up, the solder 
caramelizes and then as enough heat comes in that piece of solder that they're sitting on gets sucked right up into the seam for a successful solder joint and lo and behold it was the perfect fit for the stone as well win and now for my favorite part of any silversmithing project peeling the sticker off the silver <laughs> soldered that uh, bezel wire um, and I just kind of popped the stone in it to keep it in shape and then placed that down on my piece of flat silver sheet and just kind of figured out a nice area where it would sit and then I proceeded to uh, basically cut out um, enough silver sheet to accommodate the stone with uh, my jeweler, jeweler saw then I marked around the stone with a pencil so I could see on the sheet sort of where that stone would sit. I don't know if you can see that properly. Um, and then I decided that the piece would be textured. And so I kind of drew around that uh, bezel setting um, so I could texture the sheet before uh, soldering the bezel on to the sheet. Does that make sense? Um, so with the uh, rough outline of where the stone would sit on the sheet, I just took a little hammer um, and fairly self-explanatory really, just hammered the sheet uh, to make sure there was lots of nice dents. Um, I, I was just careful not to kind of like hammer inside of the line that I'd marked um, so that, you know, I would be able to solder it onto the silver sheet without a problem. So before soldering the silver bezel wire onto the sheet, I just wanted to get a nice flat edge and make sure that uh, you know the bezel wire would sit flush on the sheet. So I just laid down a piece of 240 grit emery paper on my bench um, and just sanded down one of the edges just to make sure that it would indeed sit flat and flush with our silver sheet, which it did. It was time to solder the bezel wire to the sheet silver. Before I did this, I just took a bit of scrap uh, silver bezel wire and made a little swirl and then rested the sheet silver on top of the swirl, which would allow me to get the heat from the blowtorch underneath uh, the piece for heating. And then to actually solder the piece, uh, the, both pieces together, um, I used easy silver solder. So with my sheet silver resting on top of the swirly bit of bezel I applied just a small amount of flux around um, the marking I made earlier and then proceeded to put down all of my little pieces of easy silver solder I think there are about 15 of them in all and then it was time to fire up the blowtorch um, and you know get soldering you can see from this fantastic shot how I was able to get the blowtorch to heat underneath the piece to solder. Soldering was pretty straightforward on this actually. Um, I just used a single blowtorch to begin with just to heat the piece evenly. I just kept it moving and kind of tried to get most of the heat like underneath the piece. Uh, and then eventually when things started to heat up and the flux started to get a bit fluffy, um, I brought in a second blowtorch um, to kind of help, you know, get the solder to run. Definitely made a big difference being able to uh, get heat underneath the piece to solder like this. Um, so if you can get yourself like a stand for a Bunsen burner or something, uh, then I think that would definitely be worthwhile. If not, this is the ghetto way to do it. So after soldering the bezel to the sheet, um, it was looking pretty rough. <laughs> um, and so to clean off some of the oxidization um, and you know any remnants of the soldering flux, um, I used a pickling solution. Uh, this is just like a mild acid. Um, and so I just used the directions on the, um, on the tin essentially to mix up some pickling mix 
put the piece in there for about half an hour and it came out nice and clean, ready for final shaping. It was time to finally start shaping the pendant. So I just took a pencil and drew roughly a rough outline around the bezel cup um, just to get an idea really of, you know, the what kind of shape the pendant would be in the end. Um, and then after that, I just took my jeweler's saw and cut it out. <laughs> I cut out the rough shape with the jewelry saw, basically. Um, and then after kind of cutting away all the bits that I didn't need, uh, it was looking quite rough. So I had to kind of smooth off the edges and get a bit of refinement to that shape. Um, I just used the number two and the number four file. Um, just kind of going around the edges and, you know, just, just refining the shape, making it look a bit nicer. The next thing to do was uh, clean up the seam of the, the bezel wire. So I just took my number four file and just went over that lightly just to kind of, you know, make it look a little bit neater. And finally, uh, I drilled a hole in the top of the piece uh, just with a drill and a drill bit, really. I'm sure you could use a hole punch or something more sophisticated, but I just used a drill. Before setting the stone and completing the pendant, I needed to trim down the walls of the bezel as the bezel was just a little bit too high for the stone at this stage. With any bezel setting, you don't want the bezel to be kind of too high. Otherwise, you know, setting the stone will just be a bit of a nightmare. And you don't want it to be too small because then the bezel won't wrap over the top of the stone to keep it in place. And so I marked a rough line of what I thought would be a good height for the bezel cup. Um, and then just took some files and some sandpaper uh, to trim it down to an appropriate height. And also um, kind of give the piece a bit of a nicer finish. Next I took a bit of 500 grit emery paper and sanded over the edges of the piece, the seams of the bezel, um, and just generally tried to make it a little bit more presentable. Um, and for the back, I just used a wire brush as I kind of wanted the back to kind of look a bit rough. For this pendant, I decided to make a simple jump ring uh, so that it, it could hang off the chain. Um, and so to do that, I just took a piece of 0.8 mil silver round wire, wrapped it around the handle of a file until I had like a, a coil basically. Uh, and then I just cut a straight line down the coil with a jeweler's saw until I ended up with a little round coil <laughs> like this. Um, then I... Um, kind of put them in place with a couple of pliers onto the piece, made sure that the edges um, lined up perfectly, and then just using a piece of easy silver solder, uh, just soldered that jump ring shut um, so that that one then would allow the pendant to hang off a chain. I wanted to oxidize this piece to help bring out all of the details from the texture. And in order to do that, I used uh, an oxidizing solution called liver of sulfur. Here's the piece before oxidizing. Um, and basically I just followed the guidelines on the bottle um, to make up a little liver of sulfur and water solution. Uh, put the piece in there for about 10 minutes and it came out like a nice dark gray black color. Um, and then before handling it, I just neutralized the piece in some baking soda and water uh, and it was ready to set the stone. The stone was a perfect fit and actually to push the edges of the bezel wire over the stone to completely secure it in place, I used a bezel rocker. And if you imagine the face of a clock, 
Um, I like to start by pushing in the wire at 12 o'clock and then go opposite at 6 o'clock and then 9 o'clock and then 3 o'clock um, and then kind of go to the numbers in between. So, you know, go to like 2 and 8, 10 and 4 and just continue going around until you basically push the bezel wire over the stone. I was just pretty gentle at this stage. Um, I always like to start with the corners first um, as it just helps to kind of push that bezel wire over the stone nice and equally um, and then it looks you know really professional and presentable. So after pushing that bezel wire over the stone as equally as I could, I used another tool, I guess we call a burnishing tool, uh, to kind of go over and rub that bezel wire um, so it was kind of all smooth without any kinks um, and just wrapped around that stone really nicely, hopefully keeping it in place forever. And finally, to bring out all the, those beautiful hammered textures, I took a piece of 500 grit emery paper, sanded over the whole piece, uh, revealing all of the lovely textures um, and just kind of bringing the piece to life. And this is what I was left with. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to you know drop me a comment and I'm more than happy to help. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I hope you enjoy getting your tools out and getting creative on your workbench. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>